Hey everyone, Golden Ninja 3000 here again. Today I'm going to be showing off all three of my LEGO Marvel modular buildings. Modular is used in a very loose term here because my Avengers Tower is not actually modular, but I don't know what else to call it because these guys are modulars and my Avengers Tower fits in with them. Um, so yeah, this is kind of like a Marvel New York City like collection slash comparison video. I don't really know what to call it. I just wanted to show you guys my three big Marvel buildings together. Um, and I will be doing a separate video about like connecting the Sanctum Sanctorum to the city, but that is the impetus for making this video because the Sanctum Sanctorum just came out. So there's the Sanctum sitting all lonely down on the ground as the other two sets rise high into the sky around it. It is so short compared to my Avengers Tower. It's a more respectable size compared to the Daily Bugle. My Avengers Tower is quite large, and you guys are hearing this here first. I am intending on expanding it even more. Um, I actually, like, in my new city layout, I know I haven't done a city update video in a long time, and it's not going to be coming until, like, December, just because I've still been doing a lot of room organization, so I will show you guys, like, kind of how I'm placing my Sanctum in my city, um, but, like, I I'm not going to be doing a full update video. But anyway, with the new city organization, I think that's going to necessitate a change to Avengers Tower. It has to be on a base plate now, so I kind of want to make it more screen accurate. So I just wanted to kind of tease that for you guys. But anyway, these are the two official Marvel sets. And yeah, they definitely <laughs> look very different from my Avengers Tower, which is a modified version of the 2015 set. So it's a lot more basic than um, the Bugle and the Sanctum. I still think they look good together. Um, and honestly, I was getting ready to retire my tower, but it turns out that that $500 direct-to-consumer set coming this fall is not going to be Avengers Tower, which makes sense because we already got a Marvel modular this year. Um, but I am kind of sad about that. I mean, I'm happy I get to keep mine, but then I'm kind of sad that we're not going to be getting something like kind of on the level of the Bugle and the Sanctum. But I did want to show you guys how the Sanctum compares to the Bugle, mostly exterior. I do not want to get into the interiors just because it's kind of difficult. And you guys know what they look like anyway. I did not do a review on the Bugle, but I did do a review on the Sanctum. And I feel like everyone knows what the Bugle looks like anyway. So I'm really just here to talk about the exteriors and how they connect to each other. So after that very long introduction to this video, sorry, I like to talk, um, now we can start getting into close-ups on these buildings. So the Sanctum comes about up to like the middle height of the third floor of the Bugle. I just realized you cannot see my hand gesturing there. So the Bugle does have, the Bugle I think is about two and a half times the height of the Sanctum, that's what I want to say. Um, and also sorry about my ring light, it reflects in like all of the glass of these skyscrapers, um, but it's too dark if I don't use it. Um, so yeah, so I, I do think that they look decent together, but it is very strange to me that the Bugle was done, I think we all know Lego went above and beyond on the Daily Bugle. They did not need to make something that big. I never in a million years expected them to make something that big. And yet the Sanctum is like kind of the opposite for me. I never in a million years expected them to make a Sanctum that was so disappointing, for lack of a better term. I've talked about this in my review, I'm sure no one wants to hear me talk about it more, but... Um, the corner of the building, like, the Sanctum's supposed to be symmetrical, and yet this LEGO model is very asymmetrical because they didn't finish the building on the side, and it's also kind of squashed in its proportions, which, next to something like the Daily Bugle, you really notice, because the Daily Bugle, I think it could have been one floor shorter, and it still would have looked excellent. So the Daily Bugle goes above and beyond, while the Sanctum is just not enough. And the point of that comparison is to say, I think the Sanctum would look better next to the Bugle if it was wider. You know, I said in my review, I think this should have been built on one and a half base plates, so it could have been more accurate. And I stand by that. I think that it would look a lot better if it was built on one and a half base plates. I will not be expanding it that much. The most I might do is add like a corner onto it if I find some instructions or if like in a year my life slows down enough for me to get some time to like do like a modification of that size. But I highly doubt I'll ever do it myself just because... I'm not willing to put in the time and energy into figuring out the design. If someone else does it, I'll gladly buy the parts, buy the instructions, and do it. Um, but actually figuring out the design is a little bit hard when I've got my YouTube channel and my job and school and, like, Legos to build and all this stuff. Um, so, yeah, so you do have a couple options for how you can connect them. The Sanctum is a corner building, which is accurate to the movies, but which I do not like in Lego form because they made the corner attachment. They didn't build the Sanctum all the way to the edge of the base plate. They made it attached through this little alleyway, and that alleyway is supposed to sync up next to the Bugle. But I don't like that, because, I mean, 
you don't want one of these things facing away from you, right? Like, I mean, I get why they made the Sanctum a corner building, but I'm like, you want to display them like this. You want to be able to see them side by side because that's the appeal of having like a whole street of Lego Marvel modular buildings. And so I really don't like Lego's suggested connection method. Just for fun, here's a look at both of the buildings from the back. And honestly, I love the Daily Bugle so much. It sits in my city and until very recently, my city was in like another room. So I never saw it that much. But now like it's back in my bedroom or it's in my bedroom for the first time. And I get to see the Bugle every day. And I just, I love it so much. It is, it is truly the greatest Lego Marvel set ever made by a mile. Um, and I just, I really, really like love looking at it again and like taking it out because honestly, the backs of these buildings are much better than they have any right to be. You don't think about the backs of Lego buildings. Lego modulars, you know, like sometimes they'll have a little alleyway, they'll have a dumpster, they'll have a back entrance. So there's something there, but these have like a lot, like the back of the bugle is like excellent because you've got windows, you've got like dumpsters, and they use the same dumpster build in the Sanctum, so I do appreciate that consistency. Um, but there's like a hiding place for Peter Parker's backpack, there's a back exit, then you've got a little balcony. Then going up, you even have like a little billboard, and you've got like the fire escape running down the side. So I really, really like the back of the bugle. Um, and I actually wouldn't mind if it was a little bit more visible in my city, but not at the cost of the front. And even the back of the Sanctum, you've got the same kind of thing. Like, you've got an advertisement, you've got a play feature, great, like, graffiti. Like, those are two of my favorite stickers in the set. And then you've even got a secret portal to Camartage in the alleyway, which is just such a perfect, cute little, like, Doctor Strange reference to include. And I also love the sides of the building. Um, I mean, not the other side, but this is what the, the left side when you're facing the building. Um, I really like this because you have like different wall sections that you can pull out. So on the bugle, you can actually just pull out that whole like little cracked area um, to gain access into the interior. And then on the sanctum, you can pull out uh, Gargantos and you can even like tuck him back inside. And I just, I like that both of these have similar functions, you know, it's just, it's cool similarities. I mean, I'd love to see them continue with removable left side walls if, not, not if, when they make a modular Avengers Tower, because I have hope. Um, but that might be a little bit of a taller order, because I don't know, like, why you would be able to remove a wall in Avengers Tower. And just for, just because I want to pull out the walls, here's how you do it. Um, that's just that's just a really great feature um because it reminds me like this is a more sophisticated version of lego's like knockout wall features on like play sets and then i am going to remove gargantos just because he needs to be tucked away into the sanctum so that we can actually start connecting these things and i'm not actually going to connect them because um both of these sets, like, when they connect in the alleyway, like, the bugle doesn't go to the base plate on either end, um, but, like, these connection points are a lot weaker than modular building ones because, just because they can be pulled up so easily, um, so I'm not even going to bother, like, sticking Technic pins into them, it just makes these videos take way too long. So here is the way that LEGO suggests you connect them, and they haven't shown an official connection, but I'm saying they suggest it because everything in the alleyway lines up perfectly. We'll take a close-up look at that from the other side in a second. But this is literally what I do not like about the, Mar about the Marvel modular building sets. Why is there an alleyway this big between these two buildings? Like, no other LEGO modular building has any kind of alleyway. Like, they'll have, like, little kind of cutout sections, but every building, at least as far as I can recall, like, goes straight to the edge of the base plate. Like, they always go to at least, like, two edges of the base plate, even if they're a corner building. The Sanctum only goes to one edge. And that does bother me. I think it should have gone all the way back because you don't need an alleyway this big. Like, it's just, it's not necessary in my opinion. And I don't like, I don't like the way it looks when you connect them. Because again, I don't like that this is a corner building anyway, because what are my options? My options are see the front of the Daily Bugle and the side of the Sanctum Sanctorum. And I mean, like, the side doesn't look bad necessarily. It just looks plain and boring compared to the front of the Sanctum, which is so, like, exciting, like, with the big window and everything, and the trees. So, I do not like this connection method, and I do not like that LEGO thinks that this is how you should put them together. All right, so here's what this connection looks like from the other side, and I think that this looks a little bit more interesting from the back, because, like, the sling ring portal would spit you out, like, right into this alley behind the bugle. But that's the other thing about the bugle, it's got alleys on three sides, which is kind of why, and I think that's wide enough. I do not think that we needed like six more studs of alleyway behind the sanctum because it just makes it too big. But this is why I say that this is how Lego intended it to be 
because you'll notice like the box from the day or from the sanctum like kind of completes the pile of boxes from the daily bugle like even like these half circle tiles line up and it's like that for the entire thing so i think it's very clear that lego thinks that this is how they should be connected but i am not lego so this is how i will be connecting my sanctum sanctorum to my daily bugle i think that this is a little bit close like it sticks really really close to the side of the bugle um and i don't love that i mean like Doctor Strange lives in, like, Greenwich Village. There's no skyscraper next to his house. It is kind of weird to me to have, like, you know, like, a quiet, mysterious, mystical house right next to giant skyscraper where villains are, like, bursting out of it at the seams. Um, I, just, I, I think it looks a little bit crowded, like, right there in the middle. But overall, like, I, I do like this a lot more than I thought I would because I was going to put my sanctum, like, removed from the bugle in my city. My city has, like, an L shape of modulars and then it has, like, a back street that has Avengers Tower and the bugle. And I was going to stick the sanctum in, like, the main part, like, with the creator expert modulars. But now I'm going to put it with the daily bugle. One, it just fits really well, like, around the curve of my train track, like, right there. Um, and then second of all, I just like the idea of having a Marvel street. Like, I like the idea of having a line of regular, like, modular buildings where people are going about their day, and then one street behind them, there's just, like, a world of chaos as villains, like, attack everybody. I think that that's just really funny to me. So, I do think that this looks decent, but again, if Lego Sanctum Sanctorum was just accurate to the main building, and if it was symmetrical, and if it had that other, like, corner... I would like this a lot more because that would kind of distance it from the fire escape a little bit, you know? Um, cause just think like, like if it had a corner like that, then like the roof would slope away and it would give you, you know, like a solid six studs of like, uh, like a little bit of breathing room between like the, this side and the fire escape. And so that's why I, I really don't like, that's just another reason why I don't like what Lego did with the sanctum. I don't know. I, I honestly do not understand why they would make a $250 Sanctum Sanctorum that was so inaccurate to what it looks like in the movie. And then just for fun, here's Avengers Tower on the right side. I mostly just put it in this video, like, for the thumbnail and for, like, the intro parts because I think they look good together. Um, this is not how my Avengers Tower looks in my city. I always keep it on its side so that, like, the big A logo, like, on the side of the tower is facing out. Um, but I do like the little street that's forming here. So, when I like put my Avengers Tower onto a base plate, I'm really gonna, I'm really gonna try to put in some effort to make it work well alongside like the two official Lego Marvel modulars. So, I mean, I, I like, I like what I've gotten here. I'm not gonna try out other combinations with the Bugle and the Sanctum. You guys can do it on your own time. I don't want to because I know I'm not gonna like how they look because all the other combinations result in one of the two buildings like facing away from each other. Like, this is the only combination, if you were to, like, actually connect it with Technic pins, that works with both buildings facing outwards. Of course, you can always put, like, the Sanctum on, like, that side of the Bugle, which I've also done, and I also don't think that looks that great. But, I mean, hey, actually, let me just do it now to show you guys. So, the reason I don't like this, even though it does give a little bit of breathing room next to the Bugle, which I like, first of all, I've got nothing to butt up against the Sanctum, which again, really makes that side stand out. If that side of the sanctum is not connected to a building, you can just see how, like, asymmetrical it is, and that really, really bothers me. So I always need that side to be up against a building. But the other thing is that, um, I mean, actually, I would have Avengers Tower up against it, but I don't want it that close to Avengers Tower. Avengers Tower needs, again, a little bit of breathing room. Um, so I guess that's the problem with the sanctum, is the left side of the sanctum leaves no breathing room for any other building. It just makes everything feel very cramped, because they chose to make it just a giant freaking rectangle instead of actually putting in the pieces to make it look good. I swear, like, this might be the single most annoying thing about any LEGO set ever for me. Like, I know I'm harping on it a lot in all these videos, but I, I just can't get over it. Um, but the other thing I really don't like is that you have the curb going straight down the middle of the alley. Like, sorry for shaking the camera like that. But yeah, like, the, like the light bluish gray stripe... It just goes straight down the middle of the alley, and I think that that looks really bad. And yeah, you, you could change it to dark bluish gray, and then, like, I think it would look a lot better. Um, but even if I changed it to dark bluish gray, I still would not like it that much. So I'm going to keep my sanctum to the right side of my daily bugle. So this is pretty much exactly how I'm going to be displaying these sets in my city. 
The only difference is that, again, for a little bit of breathing room, because the Daily Bugle sign is just very close to that floor of Avengers Tower, I'm going to have the Creator Expert Police Station in between Avengers Tower and the Daily Bugle. I just find that to be really funny. The idea that there's a police station next to a skyscraper that's being attacked by a bunch of supervillains, and yet they aren't doing anything about it. Like, I don't know. I think that that's really funny because it implies that they're incompetent, which, you know, reflects real life. So I like that. Um, and then I also am going to redo the Sanctum a little bit. Like right now, I've just kind of scattered my Multiverse of Madness minifigures around it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to have Hela and Wanda like kind of teaming up to like cover the place with like magic and like, you know, be evil and stuff. Oh, and I'll throw Agatha in there maybe. Um, so it's going to be like a little like coven of like witchy and like magic like villains attacking the Sanctum. And, you know, I'll put Sinister Strange in there and everything too. So I'm really excited for that. So, but I, I haven't done that yet. That's going to be like, that's going to be a little project when I come home in the winter time is more city work. So, I mean, yeah, but I hope you guys enjoyed this little like comparison video. I know that this has gotten once again to be really long just because I like to, I like to like puzzle things out a little bit. Um, but let me know what you guys are like most excited to see, like from me in the future regarding these sets. Um, I'll definitely make videos on the displays, but like I, I could do individual videos instead of just um, instead of just doing like a city update. And of course, like I can always make design videos as they modify the the tower, and hopefully someone modifies the sanctum so that I can buy their instructions on it. So that's it for today. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Check out my website goldenninja3000.com, and I will see you guys with more videos soon. Bye for now.